What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a color picker with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the color picker for Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so the color picker. What am I talking about? Well, if you click this button, we have this little color picker thing that pops up. We can pick any kind of color we want or come in here and select a color. We click OK, boom, that color does something, right? So that's what we're gonna work on in this video. So this is actually really, really easy to use. And in fact, it only it's only gonna take us a few lines of code to, to create anything with a color picker. And that's really cool. Sometimes in Kinter, it takes a little while to do things. A color picker is actually not bad at all. So to start out with, we gotta come up to the top and we gotta import a little something here. Uh, so this is from tkinter import and then it's just color chooser right now I know We always from kinter import everything. So if you're importing everything, why do you have to import something else from kinter? I don't know. It's just how, how it works. You got to do it. So import color chooser and that's all we need so now let's just come down here and we want to define a variable and it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm gonna call it my color and we set that equal to the color chooser and dot ask color, right? And that's it. Now we can, this will run whenever we run this program. So I got the basic starter code we've always been using, our main loop, our root. So if we just save this, I save this as color picker dot pi. If we come back here and Python color underscore picker dot pi, uh, you can't actually see it because it's on my other screen, but this just immediately pops up, right? So, okay, that's not that useful. This is our actual file here. So we want to actually kind of do something with this and, you know, designate whatever color we selected to go to a certain variable. So what we want to do is only have this thing fire when we want it to. So let's just create a little function real quick instead of just having it out in the open here. Oops. Let's just call uh, define. Uh, let's just call it color. And then we can put this inside of here. Now we can create a button. Let's go my underscore button. And that's going to be a button. And we want it in root. And we want the text to equal pick a color or whatever. And we want the command to equal that color function we just created. So now if we save this and run it, it's going to be a little bit better. Oh, forgot to pack it. It's Monday morning here in Vegas, and I forgot to pack. I always forget to pack my buttons. <laughs> Seems like, okay, so we pack this onto the screen, and now we wanna run this guy. And here we go, so we've got pick a color. When we do, boom, this pops up. So, okay, this is better. And you can pick anything inside of here, or you can, you know, pick something here, whatever you wanna do. You can change this, mess around with it, all kinds of fun stuff. Now notice here we have hue, saturation, and luminescence, and then we have red, green, and blue. Now that's important, uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but just kind of keep that in mind. So, okay, we've got this. Now if we pick a color, any color, and click OK, nothing actually happens. So when we click OK, what is actually happening behind the scenes? What is the color chooser returning to us when we click OK? Well, let's figure that out now. So let's create a label. And let's just put it inside of this function and let's just call it my label. And it's going to be a label. And it's going to be in root and we want the text to equal my underscore color. Right. And we could just pack this on the screen and let's give this a pad Y of 10 just to smush it down a little bit. So, OK, so the text is just going to be this variable and this variable is whatever we clicked in our color chooser, right? So that's, we're setting it equal to that. So if we save this and let's run it. And now if we click pick a color and let's pick yellow, and we click okay, boom, we're getting this. It looks like a dictionary and something else. So what is this stuff? Well, let's do this again. Let's pick that same yellow 
And look at this, 255.99. That's this, 255, that's the red color. The next one, 255.99, again, is the next one, that's the green color. And 00, that's the blue color. So it's returning the red, green, and blue from right here, which you may want for some reason. If you're creating a graphics program, you're gonna to wanna to break down those red, green, greens, and blues. It's also returning this, FFF00. Now this is a hex color code. And if you've done anything with sort of websites or HTML, you've used hex color codes before. So that is sort of the snapshot color, right? And each one of these has its own one. And it's actually not showing up here anywhere until we actually click this, I click okay. And then, so that one was 800040. So that's the hex color code. So we can use hex color codes in Kinter to change colors of things, right? So let's do that. Well, first let's talk about this, what it's returning. This is actually being returned as a Python list. And this dictionary is the first item in the list. This hex code is the second item in the list. So remember Python dictionaries start at zero. So this first thing here is the zeroth item. The second thing is the first item. So if we can access each of those, accordingly. So just by coming up here in our color chooser, and we can just designate which of these we want. So this is a Python list, right? The zeroth item of the list, that's the red, green, and blue. So if we save this and run it, and now we get the color picker, we'll pick our yellow again, it should be 255, 255, and zero, boom, 255, 255, and zero, well, point whatever. But uh, you get the idea. Now, what if you want something inside of those? Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we can play with this. Can we call the zeroth item of that? I don't know. I haven't tried this. <laughs> yes, we can pick our color. So it should just return 255. Boom, 255. Now, if we want the last item, which is the third item, we would pick two. So zero, one, two. This should return zero or 0, 0.0 or whatever. So let's just confirm that. Pick a color, we want zero. So it's gonna return this zero, the blue, and boom, zero. We could try it again with a different one, green, it should return 128, boom, 128. So that's how you do that. If you just want the hex color code, again, uh, we would just get rid of this and pick one, the oneth item, which is the second item. We can save this and run it just to confirm. Pick a color, we want zero, okay, boom, FFF, zero, zero. So now that we have that hex color code that we've picked or chosen with our color chooser, we can do anything we want to it. So let's play around with this. What can we do with this? Let's create another label, uh, my label two, <laughs> and that's gonna be a label, and we want it in root, and we want the text to equal, you picked a color, <laughs> right, whatever. And let's say, let's give this a font of uh, Helvetica, and let's make this really big, say 32. And now we want the color to be BG. We could set that to anything we want. Let's set that color to this color. So we can make the background of this that color. So that's fun. All right, so now let's just pack this on the screen and see if that worked. And this is just one stupid example of what you can do with your color, right? Uh, so if we pick yellow, okay, you picked a color and the background of this thing is yellow. And we're still outputting the, the hex code too, if you're curious about that. Uh, we can pick this color. We can do, you know, this color. You can change the foreground color and the background color, right? Anything you want, um, that's cool. So really, really simple, really easy to pick colors. And this color thing, this will look a little bit different if you're on a Mac or a Linux. You'll have the Mac or Linux standard color picker palette thing. It may show the hex code on it or something or whatever. Uh, but this is the Windows one and uh, very, very cool and uh, very easy to use. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.